Welcome to Great Hymns of the Faith. My name is John Frazier, and this is the first Sunday in a brand new month, the month of March. Welcome to Great Hymns of the Faith, folks. We're going to begin our program today as we always like to begin programs, if at all possible, with a great hymn of praise. And our first hymn this morning is called Praise My Soul the King of Heaven. Let me tell you just a little bit about the author of this hymn. His name was Henry Francis Light, and his dates were 1793 to 1847. Uh, Light attended Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland, distinguishing himself in English poetry. In 1815, he was ordained and served a number of parishes in Ireland and also in Western England. For most of his career, though, he was pastor at All Saints Church in Lower Brixham, Devonshire, England. He's the author of our hymn of praise this morning. Trust that you will enjoy it. The author of the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, was Thomas O. Chisholm, 1866 to 1960. Now, the composer of the music was William M. Runyon. Runyon wrote the music specifically for these words. This particular poem held such an appeal, he cries, that I prayed most earnestly that my tune might carry its message in a worthy way. And the subsequent history of its use indicates that God answered prayer. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy 
Precious Memories is reportedly written by John Fillmore in the year 1925. Here is George Beverly Shea singing Precious Memories. memories unseen angels sent from somewhere to my soul how they linger ever near me and the sacred past unfold Oh, 
stillness of the midnight precious sacred scenes What are the roots, so to speak, of the hymn, The Balm of Gilead? Well, let me share just a little information with you. After having cast Joseph into a pit, his brothers noticed a caravan on its way from Gilead to Egypt with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh. When Jacob dispatched his embassy into Egypt, his present to the unknown ruler included a little balm. During the final years of the kingdom of Judah, Jeremiah asked, Is there no balm in Gilead? Still later, from an expression in Ezekiel chapter 27, balm was one of the commodities which Hebrew merchants carried to the market of Tyre. The balm of Gilead was known to be helpful for medical purposes. Did you know that you can still get a bottle of balm today and use it as a healing salve? Enjoy the hymn, sung again by George Beverly Shea. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. Sometimes you feel discouraged and you think your work's in vain. And then the Holy Spirit revives your soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead. If you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a bond. Raised in the Church of England, Frederick W. Faber came from a Huguenot and strict Calvinistic family background. He was educated at Oxford and ordained in the Church of England in 1839. Influenced, though, by the teaching of John Henry Newman, Faber followed Newman into the Roman Catholic Church in 1845 and served under Newman's supervision in the Ority of St. Philip. Because he believed that Roman Catholics should sing hymns like those written by John Newton, Charles Wesley, and William Cowper, Faber wrote 150 hymns himself. And I would like to share with you now one of his hymns entitled, There is a Wideness in God's Mercy.
The author of the hymn, O Perfect Love, was Dorothy F. Gurney, and the year was 1883. Now, Dorothy's sister was about to be married, and she had asked Dorothy if she could compose words to a hymn that carried the same tune as another hymn which she enjoyed. Dorothy said, well, if you folks don't disturb me, I'll go into the library and see what I can do. And it's reported that 15 minutes later, she came out with the words to the hymn, Oh, Perfect Love, and many people have chosen it as a hymn to be sung at their wedding even today. Enjoy. John W. Peterson, in the year 1958, took a verse from Scripture that we're all familiar with. It comes from the Old Testament. It comes from the Psalms. It's Psalm 23. You remember that part of the Psalm that says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, that was a text, I believe, that Peterson used to compose the hymn, called Surely Goodness and Mercy.
Fanny Crosby, in 1873, said, A friend of mine, Mrs. Joseph F. Knapp, composed a melody and played it over to me two or three times on the piano. She then asked what it said, and I replied, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And we're going to bring George Beverly Shea back to sing this beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising It is reported that Charles Wesley, in the year 1740, wrote the hymn that I want to share with you now as he was in hiding for fear of a mob who was after him and who did not approve of his doctrine. In hiding, it is said that Wesley wrote the hymn, Jesus Lover of My Soul. Lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly, while the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high. Have 
I trust that you enjoyed our hymns today, folks, and until we meet again, God bless.